Tuffers and Vaughan's Cricket Show on Five Live. Yeah, Tuffers and Vaughan, this uh, will be the last one for uh, a few weeks uh, now the winter tours are over and there will be 112 Premier League games on a Monday evening, so that kind of kiboshes it for a while. They're never ending, these Premier League games. Uh, anyhow, it was a... <laughs> Kappa's going to oh. say that Tuffers has gone uh, for your look, hasn't he? Gone for the oh, yeah. Jurgen Klopp look. He's got he the has. beard going. Yeah, he has, actually. Yeah, yeah he has. I can a actually nice look, feel Phil. it growing. I can feel it growing. <laughs> <laughs> is it itchy? <laughs> it is. It might have to come off. Dawny likes it, though. Says I look is it? sexy. Is it itchy? Yeah. For? It says you look sexy. <laughs> you look sexy. Did you say? <laughs> Did you say? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting the show to begin in that way, but well, no, just, no, just, no, just like it. all three of us, Phil. Just having, it, just does Dawn wear glasses as well? No, she's had them done. She's had them lasered. Right. Really? I'm just, I'm just, just asking. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's had them lasered. I couldn't have them done because I had dry eye or something. So I've gone for the bins. We've all gone for the bins. That's yeah, nice we have a very similar got, style. Mate, yeah. Very similar yeah. style to the glasses as well, really. Yeah. We're all, we've worked together for so long, we're morphing into each other, which I don't know if that might be the most worrying thing for, really. Well, uh, we've done this show so long, none of us started with glasses on. I know. No, <laughs> we've got all got glasses on. Uh, let's talk about the uh, cricket then. India winning that final game oh, by seven runs. They take the series 2-1. Uh, kind of feels, and you said it there, Michael, you know, the white ball team, they may have had the defeats, but there's a lot to take from it. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're so well led. Uh, they have this way of playing, uh, very dynamic, very aggressive. Uh, it's fearless. You know, there's, there's an element of me that loves watching them play that way. But there's an element of me that goes, just every now and again, can you play a bit smarter? Can you just mm. rein it in? When you've, you know, you look at that first uh, one day game when Johnny Bairstow and Jason Roy were, what were they, 130 for none after 14, strolling the game, need 180 odd and 36 overs to win with 10 wickets in hand. Just play, you know, get it over the line. You don't have to win every game inside, you know, 41, 42 overs. They didn't, they went the aggressive way and they gifted India, um, you know, that, that, that victory in the first game. Then in the second game, they go out and, you know, you, know, you go back after that first game. Owen Morgan goes, nah, that's the way we play. We, we play in that fashion. So it was a message that he sent. And in the second game, they destroyed India. Um, so it's very difficult to criticise their method. But um, I, I do watch them every now and again and think, well, can you just play a bit smarter? Can you just rein it in every now and again when you've got so far ahead of the game to beat these really quality teams? And you just look at the the kind of performances have been fine, but the results haven't been that great since the win in 2019. They lost to the Australians last year here. Mm, yeah. um, lost to, beat Ireland 2-1, so they lost a the game to Ireland. And obviously they've just lost to India. So it is about winning, but when you're two years away from the next 50 over World Cup, you know, of all the formats, um, I, I'm not too concerned at this stage. I think they'll be fine. Uh, the bowling's more of an issue. You know, I do think they're a bowler or two light. Um, so that's one area that they're going to have to try and improve in the next couple of years. Yeah, if, if, if that batting line, that white ball England batting lineup, if it fires, can win any game of white ball cricket against anyone anywhere in the world, can't they? It's as simple mm, as that. Yeah, I, I, I get what you mean, Mike, but perhaps sometimes they just need to, as you say, think about it a little bit more. But as you say, Owen Morgan's very, very strong on this way, isn't he? Look, this is the way we're going to win more games. The, the nature of one day cricket and white ball cricket is that you are going to come a cropper a couple of times and you are going to lose with that mentality. But I think that he just thinks to himself, listen, we're going to win more games than we lose playing like that. A little bit I like think Kevin so. Keegan. Yeah, that, that, I, I, I put that actually in my article. <laughs> Uh, about this white ball team. Well, the, the, they do article, play the Kevin Keegan way. And I love it, you know. If, if you're asking me, would I buy a season ticket to watch England? Well, oh, yeah. I'd, I'd be the first in yeah. the queue. Yeah. You know, I think yeah. they're an incredible team to watch. I enjoy watching them. Yeah. Um, you know, there's just one or two things that you've seen. Oh, if, you, if, if you want to win a World Cup again, you know, in India in two years' time, the wickets probably won't be as flat as we've seen in Pune. Um, they, they probably will be 260, 280 wickets. And can they play smart cricket uh, on those kind of surfaces? Um the one thing that stood out for me is that, you know, there's two players that I thought did well in this series with the bat, you know, that not been playing that much. David Milan came in, he got a 20 not out in his first yep. game. He gets a 50 yesterday. But all the talk is of Liam Livingston because Liam Livingston climbed into the Indian ball and hit a couple into the stands. And because yeah. he's hit a couple into the stands, it's like, oh, he's another one. You know, Liam Livingston plays the England way. That's why 
uh, we're going to give him so much praise. Whereas David Milano almost played the old school way and didn't get that much praise, but he got a 20 not out and a 50. And I think that's how far the game has changed. You know, and how different it is these days that you can get a very consistent player. You look at England in T20 cricket chappers. David Milan averages 50. Yeah. He's the number yeah, one number T20 one player in the world. And I hear it yeah. all the time. I've been listening all week on commentary. Does <laughs> David Milan deserve a place in this? <laughs> should Ben Stokes be batting through? He averages 50 with a strike rate of 145. Yeah. And that is how yeah. powerful and how strong the group of white ball players England have. If they can leave out someone like David Milan in the T20 World Cup or Joe Root, you know, both of them, if they don't make the 11, England have got some T20 team. I, I think I think they uh, there are a few little sort of nagging concerns perhaps about that middle order uh, of, of England, do you think, Mike? A little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little you know, bit. As you say, if the likes of Bairstow and Roy don't get that electric start at the at the beginning of the, the innings, you know what I mean? Sometimes they just faltered a little bit in that middle order. Yeah, but I also look, Phil, I mean, they've, they've nearly beaten India away from home. England haven't won a one-day series in India since 1984-85. Oh, you know, you're talking a long, long time to, to and yeah. India don't lose at home that often. So yeah. to compete yeah. like they did without any real contributions from Joss Butler, Owen Morgan, yeah. you know, two yeah. high class international stars. Joffre Archer's not there, Joe Root's not there. Uh, to give debuts to Liam Livingston, Reese Topley came in and did well. Um, yeah, did. So we can't be too critical of, of the 50 over side that they've competed. No. I know India have got no Jadeja, they've got no Bumra, uh, they've got a few issues, but they're on their own backyard and they very rarely get beaten. That's why I thought it was a real shame that England didn't win the series because, you know, it's not one that you kind of go home and, and think, wait a minute, oh, we've won a a series in India and people will be talking about it for a long, long time. But when you look back and think, wait a minute, the last England team to do so was in 84. And apparently the, the victory, I think Paul Downton was the captain and really? it was the victory. You remember when Douglas Lewis was in, in, in play, all, all, all that kind of scenario and it got yeah. a bit dark and yeah. England just managed to get one run over that, you know, the target that used to be on the scoreboard. And as soon as they did, they all started flickering their eyes, looking at the umpire, they took him off and they won by Douglas yeah. Lewis was, back in 84, was that, 85. When- was that when the Duckworth Lewis system was wrong? Well, I don't know, <laughs> but that's what you did back. The first but you did that years, back in the day, it? Phil, didn't you? Playing county cricket, you remember that little girl, they had the little score on the scoreboard. And as soon as you yeah. saw your number and you were in charge and you were ahead of the game, you got your you got your glasses out and you're giving it all this that you can't see. Get off the umpire it and was, take you off. But it wasn't Duckworth. It wasn't called that, was it? Back I don't then. know what it was called. It was, chap, it it was something. Wasn't. What was it? Yeah, it was well, something strange. Someone will well, tell it was us. The one, well, it was the one where we were, we we beat South Africa in the semi-final of the World Cup. Yes, Do you remember? yes. Yeah. What was that called? Yeah. What was it? You I'm, were there. I don't. It was called. It was called the wrong system. <laughs> it was the. It was very much the wrong. I tell you what. Um, let, let's let's ask. This is the first question to uh, the ECB's managing director for men's cricket, Ashley Giles. Evening, Ashley. Evening, Chappers. What, no, what I don't know. Either. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, Shadow. You're, you're I mean, a veteran. Of all, of you'll all know. The question, yeah, of all the questions you thought you might get asked tonight, what did Duffy <laughs> yeah. Lewis used to be called? You probably didn't expect as your opening one. No, I've got quite a lot on my plate, actually, at the moment, and that was uh, the last thing on my mind. So, <laughs> um, so you, you sit down at the start of this calendar year and you work out what you will have wanted from a a test series, a one-day series, and a T20 series against India. Aside from aside from series wins, obviously, which haven't come, but there are other things, and you're looking at the big picture. Have you got what you wanted out of these, out of the tour? Uh, it's a good question. Um, well, the, you, you know, we we look ahead to the India tour. We also the Sri Lankan tour before that, mm. and, and we also sort of try and project ahead to the year. We've got to come, which is, includes a load of cricket um, in all from the 2nd of Jan or from the beginning of this year through to the end of the Ashes next year. It's 18 test matches, a really busy white ball program, um, two icon series, if you like, India and Australia, uh, yeah, and, and a T20 World Cup. So, you, you know, it doesn't get much busier than that. In, in terms of India, we knew it would be... Uh, probably our toughest challenge actually and and I know that's not underplaying the Ashes because we know how tough it is to win there but to win in India with a side particularly in Test cricket which is relatively inexperienced in those conditions is incredibly hard uh, we're really work, really pleased with the way we played in, in Sri Lanka to go there and win is is hard work and then to win the first Test in India great credit to, to Joe and his team but um, you know after that we have to put our hands up we're outplayed by the Indians 
Ash, uh, Vaughny here. How are you? Hi, Vaughny. Um, just tell, when was it decided um, that the, those four test matches against, you know, in my opinion, the best team in the world, India, in their own backyard, was it that you were going to rotate the team for those four games? Well, before, before the tours, um, again, we, you know, we looked forward to this whole year and what we decided was that anyone, any of our multi-format players, any of our players who play across all formats should not have to do all of that time on the road. So, that, so the team basically left on the 2nd of Jan and they've just landed now uh, at the end of March. We didn't think it was right or proper from a well-being, mental health point of view for any of those players to be away from home for all that period, particularly under you know, COVID um, times and pressures. Um, so that, that was the decision that was made within that, then you try and work out, okay, when, how can we split this up? So we've got, you know, strong teams all the time, because there's always pressure to win wherever you are. Um, and it, you know, you, we always knew we were, I suppose, well, we're in those times of polarizing opinion, aren't we? And we knew we were going to do that, but I think we've done in the circumstances best we can. You know, I think we also have to consider how difficult at the moment it is to move people around the world in these times. The logistics are almost impossible. So moving single people around the world, at least going out to countries, going out to India or going out to Sri Lanka, is almost impossible without serious risk, um, you know, of, of being a close contact or picking up infection and then, you know, possibly being in quarantine for 14 days in government facilities, et cetera, et cetera. So we've been relying a lot on um, charter flights, which is okay if you're, again, moving big groups around. But, you know, that, uh, you, can, you can gather from my answer, Vaughny, that it's, um, you know, we're, we're trying to be as flexible as we possibly can. Um, we're trying to support our players and our management as best we can in very difficult circumstances. Um, and in one of our busiest years, we're going to have, you know, we talk about 19 being a challenging year with the World Cup and the Ashes. This year is as challenging as that, if not more, under these conditions. Yeah, it's just, you, you mean, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the load of cricket in, in 2021. You've just mentioned again how much cricket's going to be in 2021. Why, why is this the first ever year that you're allowing your England contracted players to play the full IPL when you've got that much cricket? Well, I mean, you know, firstly, you know that the, the IPL is here to stay. Um, that's not going anywhere. Uh, there's been pressure for some time, uh, and I think this this is both sides because uh, IPL teams want full availability for their mm -hmm. players, um, and the players want to play in the IPL. So, you know, I think what we don't the road we don't want to go down. We don't particularly want to go toe to toe with our players over. IPL participation in the long run because as you know we know we may face losing some of our best players so um, that's one factor the other factor when you consider that as well is the benefits of the IPL yeah we've um, I think we've got 12 out of the 16 squad that are in India going to IPL this year the benefits are clear you know we are still despite the losses in India against a really strong India team um, we're still number one ranked in both white ball competitions. And part of that will be down to the experiences these guys get in that competition. Now, um, you know, I know you'll say, or you might say next, um, we've got two test matches that some of these guys may miss. Y yes, we have against New Zealand. Those, are, um, those test matches were added very late to the schedule. I think they're only confirmed at the end of January. By that time, uh, our players had signed their contracts. We were in agreement with them, and we didn't think it right at that point to renege on those on those contracts. Um, why were those test matches arranged then? Well, there's a lot of other benefits for us playing those two test matches for broadcasters, for fans, for venues, um, and in many ways, it, it also provides us with a bit of a safety net having such a good team in the country when there is still so much uncertainty around. Do you do you, do you have a genuine fear that? Um, a, a player would choose the IPL over England? <gasps> oh dear. Uh, right now, um, look, I think our players love playing for England. Um, uh, I don't particularly right now, I don't want that to be a kiss of death, but I think we have to understand that um, that could be a danger in the future. But um, 
you know, I, no, I don't feel that immediate threat. But as I said previously, um, you know, that window was clear for anyone who got to the later stages of the IPL to to play in the whole competition. That's how their contracts were agreed. And, um, you know, uh, we, we, as I said, we don't think it's right to renege on that agreement. Yeah, uh, Gilo Tuffers here, mate. How are you? Hey, Tuffers. Yeah, very good. Um, what uh, the rotational policy and everything? There's been a lot of talk about it. Is that going to be sort of implemented for the Ashes as well coming up? Well, look, I think we all hope that we will start to return to some normality. Um, hopefully, uh, soon, sooner rather than later. Um, what you do know, Tuffers and, and Vaughan, that that we've we've had to rotate certain parts of our certain specialisms anyway. So our bowlers in, in these times, we're already rotating because in quite, you know, short and compacted test series. Now you, you can't afford to play Mark Wood every test match, yeah. but you know, our, our big strategic priorities, and this isn't underplaying India, certainly our big strategic priorities from now until the end of January next year are the T20 world cup. And, and of course winning the ashes away. So, Look, we are throwing everything at that. But um, again, the way hopefully we've managed our players during this period, again, with a well-being uh, and their, their mental health at the very forefront of that, is getting a squad and getting a team to the T20 World Cup and, and the Ashes that are fit to play physically and mentally. And with the amount of cricket we've got, living in bubbles, quarantine, being away from families all this time, um, you know, there's a, there's a genuine concern that we wouldn't do that if we if we weren't proactive in our management. So, so once sort of quarantine is finished and the world hopefully gets back to normal, can you see that sort of obviously, you know, you'll be looking to rotate fast bowlers and things, but then you'll sort of mm. put the rotational plan sort of, that will sort of stop, do you think? Well, it, it, player management is, is going to be there for forever, um, Tuffers. I mean, it, mm. you just have, uh, you know, I've talked about the schedule for this year. That doesn't suddenly stop at the end of the Ashes next year. In fact, I think about four or five days after we finished the Ashes, a white ball team goes to the West Indies, play a long white ball series, and then we play three test matches. So, you know, and then it continues. And that, that's what the future tour programme looks like. What we do know is we can't afford to play what is what would be perceived, obviously, by different people and different critics of, of uh, you know, selection, our best team every game because we will just burn people out and we will lose them. And um, we need to look after them better than that. I mean, Vaughan and I played in a period that was really successful. Vaughan was our captain. We played a lot of cricket together. We got to the end of 2005 and we fell apart and never played again. Simon Jones never played for England again. And we don't want to get to that stage again. Uh, is, is Test cricket still the pinnacle? I think it is, yeah, and and I, you know, it, is that it, in our it, eyes, Ash, or is that in the, you know, I'm I'm, I'm talking to you now. Think, You're an administrator. I, I'm a broadcaster. <laughs> I hope Test cricket yeah. is still the pinnacle. In my eyes, it is, but is it really still the yeah. pinnacle in the game's eyes? Look, I think it is to this this group of England players. I I, I do believe it is, um, but I think what you're saying in the next generation or the generation after that. You know, we we could have problems, but and I, and I really think we should try and protect it. And it's frustrating um, when you read and hear hear some of the stuff around this winter because we do absolutely respect Test cricket, and you know we we have um, put a lot of efforts into that. And certainly when Chris Silverwood came in, we talked a lot about redressing the balance between white ball and red ball cricket, which perhaps had been lost a little bit in the lead up to the 19 World Cup. And it had to be because we'd never committed properly to white ball cricket. But we tried to address that. Um, I think um, you know, Chris Silverwood and Joe have formed a really solid partnership. And that's demonstrated in, you know, well, Joe's return to form, the way he's developed as a captain. And actually our test form over the last year and a half, apart from this India tour, um, we've done pretty well. So, so, how would you describe the Silverwood Root partnership then and how it works? Um, well, I think they're very clear chappers on their, their blueprint, how to play test cricket. And everyone knows this. I think it's been well documented, you know, play the long game, um, get big scores, put oppositions under pressure, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and the games, you know, we need to adapt because the games in India weren't like that. They were quick games. 
And you need at times to better adapt your game to that sort of cricket. Absolutely. And your skills. Um, but I think they have a really nice balance. So Joe's developed as a really, I think, really good captain. Um, has he, he been em- has uh, he been empowered by Silverwood? Well, I think there's really clear lines of responsibility. So, you know, um, in the build-up to games, um, you know, in the practice sessions, meetings, generally, obviously the head coach takes on the, those responsibilities and it allows Joe Root to um, concentrate on what he does best, which is bat and, and score runs. And we know if Joe, Joe Root scoring runs, we're generally more successful. And then when it comes to just for game time, you know, Joe takes over and he's obviously still supported through the matches then by the coaching staff. But uh, I think they've struck a really nice balance. Uh, Jilo, what, what, what do you think? Uh, do you take sort of that Indian test series as a, as a series in isolation? Is that still happening? Or what do you think, you know, looking forward, how do you think you could go there better prepared or what have you? Well, I think if you... Um, yeah, we know again, it's a tricky back, old spot to go, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And, um, you know, if you look back at um, South Africa last year, for example, we won there, but we talked a lot about the young players coming through, and particularly you know, talking about focusing on test cricket. Some young top-order batters who are making their way in the game. Now, they were young a year ago. They suddenly haven't gained 10 years' experience or 10 years in age. And going to India in those conditions you know, would have hit them like a thunderbolt. It's tough. Yeah. Whatever preparation we give them and whatever experiences we can give them, there's very little that's going to prepare them apart from doing it for a challenge like that. So they'll be better for that. Um, but obviously the big things are those, you know, those two areas, bowling spin and playing spin. Um, and, uh, you know, when you're up against some of the best at it who do it day in and day out, um, sometimes you are, you're going to fall short. But we always try and prepare cat nowadays i think more than we've we've ever done and and in the past you know all of us have played the game and played in these conditions we we try and prepare our players for all these different uh, climates conditions of pitches balls even you know everything climates it, yeah. it, it, it is it's um you know we try and give them all these experiences to prepare them and and Jolly, you mentioned spin dominic best yeah. was left out after the first test having got four for in the first innings and moen ali played one game knowing that he was going to be going home. And, and, and obviously you mentioned slightly disappointed with a bit of criticism about, I guess, the respect for Test Match cricket. But you must understand that the fans out there would see Moeen play one game, then he goes home, and then he doesn't play one game in the five T20 uh, series. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we had... Um, we'd obviously communicate with the players about when they were going to take their breaks... Um, obviously the selectors or, or out on the ground, Chris and, and Joe wanted to make that change. Mo came in and did well. Um, but Mo was due to go home and it was his only break. And you know, he may, he may have played a lot more cricket in that period after Christmas if he hadn't also contracted, um, COVID when we were in Sri Lanka, which in itself, he spent you know, two weeks in isolation, which is in- incredibly tough when you're in a hotel room away from home, even away from the team. Um, so yeah, the, the, again, this isn't a perfect world. And as I said before, just moving people around the world at that point needed a fair, fair bit of advanced warning or advanced planning. Um, and, um, you know, it, 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 we're not always going to get that right. And in terms of the T20s, yeah, Morx was quite clear that he, he wanted to look at, um, scenarios and teams in preparation for, um, for, for the end of the year in the World Cup. Moen didn't play in that, but of course in this, you know, I think he showed again what Mo can do in this, these, um, these ODIs. He's still a, a great competitor and we're very lucky to have him. Do you, do you have any concerns for Don Bess, Ash, with the way that he was treated? And he obviously played that, that last test match and understandably he was low in confidence. He was playing against Indian batters who are, are excellent on those kind of wickets. Do you have any fear that, that that may have knocked him back so much, having got 17 wickets at 22 apiece, and then he was left out the side? Um, well, again, as as we we both know, it's a tough environment, um, international sport, cricket in those conditions. But he's also a really young man still, so he's still learning his trade. What, what's Bessie, 23 or 24? Mm. Uh, I wasn't even playing consistent 
first class cricket then I don't think and he's already done a lot now he will learn from that experience um, we know what that cauldron's like and again you know we talked about whether it be social media or otherwise the polarized opinions this um, you know you know you've got to have pretty thick skin nowadays but you know we're absolutely give Dom 100% support and I'm sure he'll be back he's a he's a combative cricketer a good all-round cricketer and uh, I think he'll be fine I, I, I don't want to um, turn this into why why wasn't this done or why haven't you done this or why haven't you done this but um, uh. but 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 there's a t- there's a t- there's a two part there's a two part que- a two-part question to this so the first part is I've spoken to a, fair, a, a few people in the game and and the feedback from from a lot of them is is a lot of these players and this has a, this isn't England players but but a lot of players who are going around the world playing in all of these different tournaments at the moment. It is tough with, with quarantining and isolating and then biosecure bubbles and so on and so forth. Have What have players told you about how tough it is, is the first part. And then the second part is, given how tough I am being told it is, do you need to take, do you need to take quite good care of Matt Parkinson, who's gone round the world and hasn't mm. actually played any cricket in tough conditions? Um. Yeah, good, good question. Again, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, you know, we we try and take care of all of all our, you know, all our people. Sure, I, sure. I think sure. Um, there were uh, arriving back today. There were at least three, maybe more, who have been on the whole trip. One of them is the head coach, which is an extraordinary effort. Again, through that, I, I know everyone would say well, that's his job, but um, you know, a, a tour like that in the subcontinent mm. uh, was brilliant. Um, Parky's one of the others. Um, great experience for him to be out there bowling day in, day out. Um, but as you say, being in hotels, being in quarantine uh, is hard. But we, you know, we keep constant check, health checks, mental health checks on these guys. And if at any point we felt that um, we needed to get him out, uh, we certainly would have done. And that that was always, um, you know, what we've told all of our players and management throughout this that that. Um, you know, with well-being and mental health being so important right now, not not just in cricket and sport, but with with this layer of COVID, that don't be afraid to put your hand up and we'll get you out. And it was absolutely, you know, definitely easier to get people out of the country than than in. But um, that was at the very top of our minds, uh, chappers. Uh, just ask, just you know, on on the mental well-being of the players who are now are in a bit of you know, the, the IPL bubble for a, a week or so before it starts. Do you mm. take that on yourself to make sure that the players, even though they're with franchises now, do England still manage that individual player while they're with their IPL franchise teams? Yeah, that, that support remains throughout. You know, they're, they're still our, our players, um, even players who aren't centrally contracted. You know, if, if they've been around our our teams, you know, we had a couple of guys who, who tested positive in uh, the Pakistan Super League. And we were quick to make sure that, you know, that there's support there on offer if they need it. And that, that's right, it's not giving away any confidences and they didn't necessarily seek it. But absolutely, we need to make sure that, um, you know, these players aren't just ours when they're on the field and representing England. Um, we need to have a genuine care for them. Uh, and, and that's what part of this is about, Vaughan, to be honest. You know, it's, it's trying to show the players and their families throughout this period, whatever choices they make and whatever competitions they play in, that we have genuine care for their welfare. And I think we'll get it back in spades if we do that. Uh, Joel, you've been in the gig for a little while now. What's been the toughest thing that you've come up against? And what's been the most surprising <laughs> thing? Go on. Um, well, I thought, I, thought, I thought my first year was tough. Um, <laughs> we had... Um, the you know the Alex Hales scenario before the World Cup, mm. we had uh, a World Cup which we looked like we weren't going to qualify for semi finals at one point, and we won that. Then we had an Ashes, then we started South Africa pretty poorly with illness, etc. That turned out okay, and then I suppose by the time we got to Sri Lanka, what was this in in 2020 in, a, in the March time, took took a, a deep breath and you know oh thank thank goodness for that we're through the worst of it, and then a pandemic arrived so. Um, it, it's Pretty. just, it's been, yeah, it's been nonstop. I think, um, I think the weight of pressure for every, and I think everyone feels this cat is, is you know, during this period of COVID, 
absolutely the well-being and, and the health, the physical health of our people is the most important thing. But there's also a great responsibility to the game um, of getting cricket on and keeping the lights on. And I think we are, we're all very aware of that. So, you know, that, that just raises the, the, um, the pressure on everything you do because you're trying to protect these environments. You're trying to make sure you don't have positive um, cases, both from a people point of view, but a getting cricket on point of view. And, it, it, you know, every turn and every day, there's another there's another layer added because the situation changes so quickly so um you know it's it's great learning experience for all of us but uh yeah we're not always going to get it right either i think we have to hold our hands up that this isn't a perfect situation jala there's been a a few reports suggesting that the central contracts may be changing is there any truth in that are you looking at you know the next kind of band of central contracts to potentially change them? I don't know if uh, Tom Harrison's been on the phone saying you've got to look after the coffers, Jarlo, but is there anything uh, of any no. truth in that? There's certainly nothing in that. You know, we, we, we've invested very well in our, in, our, in our players, in our England teams. Um, uh, but, you know, at that point, taken from a slightly different angle, is a good one is that, the, you know, the pot is only so big. So whatever we do with that money, how we split it, um, you know, we, we'll do in agreement with the players and with TEP, who are the, their representatives, the Team England Player Partnership. And what we're always looking to do is try and improve our systems and make them more efficient. Um, now, at the moment, perhaps, you know, given what we've talked about with with needing more players and moving players around a bit more and from code to code, maybe we, we need more flexibility within that contract system. And Certainly, it's something we're looking at. I don't mind saying that, but we, we always do it in partnership, as I say, with with the players and their representatives to try and find a better solution. And the way cricket's moving and how busy it is, it's not that this system um, is, is not fit for purpose. It's just that it, it may already be slightly out of date and we need to look at it and, and we'll do that. Is that one of your main kind of roles now this summer? Is is, is it this year that it changes or is it the following year that they, they have a kind of a, a change in terms of where you can, I don't say rip up the contracts, but you can start afresh if you if, if you get the agreement from uh, the Team England Player Partnership? Well, the contracts, you know, I won't go too much about their, their employment, but the, the players are basically, the, the central contract year is, is sort of 1st of October to end of September. So, you know, we've, we've got time now to talk about these things. We've actually got a couple of um, months right now. We've got no international cricket. Uh, and so there's a bit more freedom to look at this sort of stuff. But uh, again, it's always done in conjunction with and in partnership with, um, you know, the players and their reps. The, there's there's one part of people looking at it. Think, well, you've got through all the winter now and maybe na- navigating that and all the bubbles and so on and so forth was the hardest part. Are you... Are you expecting a battle this summer between commercial pressures and trying to protect your England players? And by that, I mean, well, we've already talked about, you know, IPL and whether players are available to play in the test. Mm. You've then got the brand new competition starting in July, where commercially people will say, and maybe the ECB will say, actually, I don't know, the big name players who are in the hundred. Will the ECB will want them to play a lot of those hundred games to get the crowds in, or the teams themselves might want them to play, and yet you are balancing that with your player welfare again. Yeah, and again, that you're spot on, Chappers. That we we have to. That's why we have to. We can't view sort of isolated series as they come along. We have to try and look at the year ahead and 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 plan for it. The, the hundred, I think, is going to be fantastic. I think it'll be a great competition. Uh, I heard Vaughan talking about white ball cricket before I came on, and yeah, it's just gone mad, hasn't it? I mean, it's it, it's such an exciting game to watch, unless you're a bowler. Um, but um, the hundred, I think, is going to be a good. You're spectacle. over the wicket stuff. I should go all right, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have made millions. Or I got miles. One of Bowl it under the bat, Ash. Get it under the bat. <laughs> but, but, we, but Ashley, we've said for a decade on the show, and you've been part of this show at times. That, that this isn't like 
with all due respect at times, growing up in the 80s when the the superstars of cricket were the overseas players who came in from, from the West Indies in particular. You know, if, I, if mm. Hampshire came to town against Lancashire, you, wa- you went to go and watch Marshall and Greenwich if they were there, De Haynes yeah. at Middlesex and so on and, and so forth. Now, the England players now are the superstars for the boys and girls growing up. Yeah. And this is the this is the all singing, all dancing, bells and whistles tournament. Yeah, absolutely. But I will say, you know, in case I'm misquoted, that that playing for England in these circuits, if we've got England fixtures, that takes priority. And we've got a massive test series at the end of our summer against India. Um, if there are opportunities for our players to go back and play in the hundred, that's brilliant. And we will try and do that because of exactly what you just said there, Chappers. It, it is important and it's important for, for the profile of that competition. But playing for England has to come first. You know, who, who knows what will happen in the future? You know, will there be, you know, windows for these competitions? I don't know. But, you know, at the moment there is, there is a lot of cricket that we're trying to service and, and that's why, you know, one of our policies around blooding a bigger group of players and, and, and exposing them to international cricket is, is not a short-term measure. You know, that's not talking about rest and rotation, but we're going to need a bigger group of players if we're going to service this schedule. Ashley, can, can I ask you about Jofra Archer's injury? Um, yeah. What happened there? Now, I've read that he's, has he dropped a fish tank on his <laughs> finger whilst having a bath? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this this is um, this is going to sound like an awful conspiracy, and I can see what's going to happen on Twitter straight away as soon as I say this. But yeah, he um, he, he was cleaning or something at home, and he and he he's got a fish tank, dropped the fish tank, cut his hand. Yeah, so um, he's been in surgery today. Uh, he's come out of it well, and um, you know, it was managed through India. It, it didn't stop him playing, but. Um, given he came home for for uh, an injection and treatment on his elbow, he went to a specialist because the finger was still a bit stiff, and they've they've operated. And actually, I think they found a small fragment of glass still in it um, yeah. in the tendon. So it was the right thing to do. We've got a, you know clear window to do it as well. So you know we obviously wish him wish him best for his recovery. But it's true. It's not uh, it's not a conspiracy. <laughs> it was a fish tank. So, Jal, so the, the finger's going to be fine. I, I think more importantly, the elbow. You know, how I bad you were is that say elbow? More, impor- oh, more importantly, the fish. The fish. The fish. <laughs> yeah, did, what happened to the fish? Are the fish gone? Don't tell me the fish had died. Well, it was in the bath. They could have just swum in the bath. Yeah, yeah but there been, was he actually in water in the bath? So they were all right. There's, there's no happy ending for Nemo. I don't oh, think. Boy, but, um... Oh, Oh, Jilo. You will be getting some pelters on Twitter for that. Um, uh, the elbow, that, that, that's the most important aspect in getting Joffre playing a bit this summer and bowling quickly and, and getting him right for the Ashes in the T20 World Cup. Is he going to be fine for that? Yeah, look, you, you've said it all there, so I'm not going to repeat that. That's absolutely at the front of our minds is making sure that uh, Joffre is fit and available to do what he does best, which is bowl quick and, and enjoy his bowling. Um, and uh, this elbow injury, it, it certainly... Um, just stopped him from, you know, well, and over time, certainly through the T20 series, that condition worsened and he couldn't couldn't play without um, some form of pain relief. Um, and you have to manage these things carefully because it, it, a bit like his finger, actually, you know, it seems like a, a small thing, but it's his, his middle finger on his right hand. It's pretty important when you're a, a fast How did he manage bowler, to play with, with that, that injury? Well, uh, you know, I think he, he was treated when he arrived. and it, There wasn't an open wound on that finger. Um, it obviously healed, but there was part of the fish tank still in his, um, still in his finger. Um, but uh, now the elbow, you know, we need to, to manage carefully. We've got a really good medical team. We don't know what's going to happen yet in this next couple of months. Um, but uh, priority is to get both these things right and get him back on the field. What 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 is the elbow issue? Is is a I think there was was it Tim Bresnan had a, a problem with his elbow back in the day. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's not really my field, but it, it um, you know previously he'd had a different injury in there. Um, uh, clearly, what he does there's a there's a lot of energy goes through that that area, um, but it 
it, you know, it, it, I think we need to try and manage it as as conservative as poss- conservatively as possible because it, you know, this is um, this is a really important you know area of the body for for Joff and uh, uh, again we we need to look after him first and foremost. But um, you know, I'm I'm pretty confident that he'll he'll be fine. I'll be back. Um, as soon Has he as got he can. a new fish tank? <laughs> well, I'm sure I get a few offers now. Um, I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. I don't know who makes fish tanks, but uh, someone will. Um, so, so finally, really, I mean, tough as asked you, you know, all the challenges that you've had. Um, yeah, your hope is that by the time England get to going down under for the Ashes, it's it the, the everything has calmed down slightly. Yeah, that, that's our hope. I mean, it's still going to take an awful lot of good management to get to get us, you know, having... So, from the end of the season, I think we finish on about the 14th of September. About the 20th, we go to Bangladesh for a white ball series, then to Pakistan, then to the T20 World Cup, and those all-format players will then go to the Ashes. Um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly look to take an advanced party to the Ashes of test specialists before then. So, there's a lot of, lot of moving parts... Um, in that but uh but it's all good fun as well and they're great challenges you know we have an opportunity to to hold both white ball world cups um at the same time which would be fantastic and we've got an opportunity to go to australia and win so uh, you know for for me fantastic um that is a fantastic opportunity and i think we've got a, a good bunch of people to achieve that uh, and finally bearing in mind you've you've just explained you, you know all the all the all the tours and, and, and games that England have over the coming six months, mm. eight months, wh- whatever it may be. How how often are conversations being had where people are sitting down and going, this is absolutely ridiculous in men's cricket. It, I it, agree. It cannot yeah. continue at this rate for these elite players, both internationally and, well, and domestically as as far as all the different you know, T tens and T twenties and hundreds are concerned. How yeah. often are these are these conversations being had? Because it can't, Ashley. It can't. Yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, I'm obviously not involved in those conversations at ICC level. But the, 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 there's clearly, as you say, chaps. There's this there's this play off between the commerciality of sport and our people, and you know, um, their welfare and, and and seeing your best players all the time, but. You hit the nail on the head, and I think you've explained it better than me. That basically, with that much cricket, it isn't possible to play your best players, your Ben Stokes, every single every single day of the week. You you just can't because um, you will lose them. So um, you know that's why um, you know, we know what the schedules look like in the next even sort of six seven years, and it doesn't look like it's getting a lot better. So we're trying to be proactive in our in our management of our players and, and um, you know, we're, we're hopeful that will work. But it, it, there's also a case to say if there wasn't all this international cricket in now, you know, where, where there's space, people would find cricket chappers. There'd be yes. a new competition popping well, up. Well, um, that's you know, it. So, uh, yeah. I thought yeah, I was I mean, going to see you playing in that uh, road safety series, Ash, in <laughs> India. You were there, weren't you, bowling? You're over the wicket to Sachin. You get him stumped again. Well, looking at a couple of them, Vaughnie, I think I'm, I think I'm fitter Come on, than a name few. Names. Who do you reckon was the biggest? Come on. <laughs> I, think he was, I think he was one of our teammates from 05. <laughs> well, our, our old mate Hoggy didn't get on the pitch, did he? He probably didn't pass his fit. He might have got down the steps. But, he couldn't, yeah, um, he couldn't <laughs> get out the door. <laughs> well, he, he, he's, he's, his game now is eating. That's what his job is. He's got those drills and that's what he does. He produces food for people and he eats a lot of it, I think. Yeah, um, absolutely. And to come full circle, uh, the predecessor of Duckworth Lewis was the most productive overs method, which was used yes. until oh. 1998. There you yeah. go. Fantastic. Great to have you on, improved. Ashley. Thank, th- thank you very much for, <laughs> Good luck, mate. Um, for Cheers, all your Ash. honesty and joining Thanks, us. Thanks, guys. I appreciate no it. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Thanks very Ashley much. Ashley Giles, uh, Managing Director of ECB Cricket. Yeah, that is a good right. question, Tuffers, about the challenges that he's had. Yes, I know. I, 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 but you're exactly right. Surely people just can't keep playing cricket like we are. You know, and I did ask Ashley there, is it just because of the pandemic and everything? And he has then sort of said, well, obviously that will become easier once we come out of the pandemic and everything, but we're just going to have to rotate just because of the, 
you know, they're playing every single day. It's yeah. just going to, they're, yeah. they're going to yeah. explode. They're going to explode. Think, though, Chav, you, you, that was a, a really kind of uh, poignant, it wasn't just a question, it was an opinion. You, you gave an opinion. Of, you can't carry on. It can't carry think, on because yeah, what's going to happen in the future yeah. is that the, the ECB will want a window for the 100 because that's the way you're going to get your tournament to, to grow. You can get all your England players playing in your home tournament, the IPL, the Indian players play. You know, the Big Bash has been a little bit diluted because the Australians don't play in it. And, and, well, you know, and also, rightfully, and if also you're because, also because Michael, they've doubled the number of games. Correct, it's I too mean, long. I mean, I've, just, I've said for years the IPL's who's, who's too long. The big that's a good is, idea. Who's well, the coffer guy? The, 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 the ladies and gents that are involved in you know getting those checks in, and unfortunately, we've just gone through a pandemic, so they'll be looking at even more opportunities to make more money. So the next three or four years. You know, we're just going to be looking at the the twelve months of cricket, and there will not be a day when there's not cricket. No, no. no. I mean, and, and there'll be crossover. I mean, Jilo mentioned at the end of the Ashes, the England team go to the West Indies. And I think there's a T20 game Pakistan. five or six days after the last Test match in January, mm-hmm. and then there's a few one days, and then there's three. T- uh, Test matches in March. I think the ECB have agreed to play a few more games to give oh, back to the West Indies, which is great. But you'd have to say, at this stage, with everything that's to come this year and in January next year, that England must be taking a second team for that tour. Mm. They must be. They can't, they can't take their full-string team to, for, for that kind of tour. And I would totally agree with that. Um, and that's going against, you know, the, the four tests in India. You're playing the best team. I think you work right, your system boys. to make sure yeah. that your best players are available for the big, big, big test series. And if yeah. you miss one or two others, well, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's the nature of the beast in, in this area. got a lot of balls up in the air there, haven't you? Lots. Of, oh, yeah. a lot but I mean, on. you only have to, you know, to flick on Sky or whatever at the moment. Oh, not at the moment, but over the last month or six weeks. And, you know, you've got the PCL going on. You've had T tw- <laughs> T10s going on. And whilst they're all valid competitions within their domestic market i'm not you know criticizing the, you know the pakistani t20 by any means but it's only when you start to see and then there's a south african one and yeah. then there's oh, and obviously but I will say, chappers, you're going to run out of players yeah i think it's a great opportunity <laughs> if you're going to be a cricketer you know and try and earn a few quid now's the era because you've yeah. got that many opportunities because if you don't get in the ipl you'll get in the bangladesh one or the sri well, lankan one you, well, or the well, south african it, one yeah you, there again, you see. So then do you flip it and go, oh, actually, for Tom Cole or or Saki mm. Mahmood, who are, who are playing out in Pakistan in the T20? In the T20 well, actually, I think it's great. That, that, that's got to be better than, you know, being stuck in an indoor gym in Lancashire or Yorkshire or wherever well, it may well, be. Well, let's go back to the through. 90s, Chappers. The 90s, yeah. Phil, when, when we were playing, <laughs> basically, if you didn't get an England Day tour or a full tour in the winter, you, you could go and play Can't a bit of cricket up. in Australia or South Africa. Uh, you were at home doing nothing, whereas now, <laughs> you know, the group and the pool of players that are available to go and travel the world and play in all these uh, leagues yeah. around the world and earn you know decent money for doing so, uh, cricket's getting a good... Oh my, get, you, I'll tell you what, Phil, I would pay you a lot of money to go and play in that road safety series in India. I would love I, I to see you try it in. Honestly, Listen. please. All the old fellas over there now, they're going to need to be rotated, so another mob will have to go over there. <laughs> I might miss I might that need, be I the might six next year. I'll come in the year after, Phil. <laughs> oh, um, dear, oh, dear. I mean, the other thing with, with Ashley Jaza, I mean, you know, obviously, he's been part of this show at times. We all know him fairly well, some of us very well, obviously, Michael. And, you know, he answered everything that, that was thrown yeah. at him. Were you satisfied with the answers? Yeah, I think he... he Bearing in mind, the, there's been a lot you've been critical of. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the, the one area of concern is the IPL. You know, why? You know, yeah. and, and there'll be so many England fans thinking, come on, you know, mm-hmm. this bio bubble, you know, will it get a mention in the next two two months when the players are earning lots of money in the IPL? Um, would it have been... I mean, and, and bearing in mind, he's mentioned this schedule. It's the first year that England have allowed their players to play the full IPL. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's a concern for me. Um, you know, I he, just he mentioned got... that that was you know done when they did the contracts months ago in terms of signing for those franchises. But uh, that is a, a, a wheel that's changing, and that is a, yeah. a worry for me in Test cricket that you know players will potentially be still playing in the IPL when they should be playing against New Zealand at Lords, where I hope will be crowds for the first time. Uh, I, I, that doesn't sit comfortable with me that England players who are contracted to England would be playing in India when they should be playing a test match at Lords. And I, and I heard it in his voice when you asked him, Mike, um, is, is test match cricket still the pinnacle? And he said, I think it is for this generation of players. 
I, I heard him sort of saying that, listen, you know, the next generation of players, who knows? You know, they. I think that, I think that all of us actually, even the toughers of all show you chappers and Gilo and everyone. You know what I mean? I think they do have a, a, a kind of a. You've got to be the protector of Test match cricket, and we have t- t- talked mm. about it a couple of times. In it, you know what I mean? But I think that the next generation, we've got to be really, really careful because I think that could be the first sort of format of cricket to go by the wayside. You know. Well, let me float this then, and. Uh, you said, you asked him, Michael, you know, do you think at the moment an England player would turn their back on, on yeah. England for the IPL? Maybe it's slightly playing the, long, the long-term game a bit here, and this I'm just throwing out a hypothesis, is that actually by allowing this, you might prolong the England career of some players so that they don't go, well, actually, if you, in two years' time, say, well, actually, if you're not going to let me play IPL, then I'll... I'll walk out of England at the age of 27, 28, as opposed to 31, Chappers, I'd 32. Let them. I'd let them. Honestly, I would. Uh, because an England contract is, is, is worth so much more to your value as an individual down the line if you have one for a long period of time. You know, you can play for your franchise for a year or two. They spit you out. If you have two or three bad games, you're out. Yeah. If you're signing that England contract that looks after you for 12 months, Jala said himself, you know, the, the, the mental well-being, the test that they go through, the, the pastoral care that that contract gives you. And it wasn't just that he mentioned the people that were economy, he mentioned two players in the Pakistan Super League that were England contracted. But if you are an England contracted player, what that brings to you to have those three lines and you're representing that every single day of the year, I'm sorry, it, 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 if it means that... You know, one or two players decide upon that at the age of 26, 27, good luck to them. That's all I'd say, because until that hard edge management comes into place, we will be in a stage in three or four years where I believe Test Match Cricket will be going by the wayside. It's down to the people that are administrating, managing to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, Phil? Yeah, no, agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah agreed. But in fact, I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just got a couple of minutes left, uh, which means we can reflect on on how the winter uh, has gone. This is how we started, and I think we can we can end with. Um, in the main, I, it feels it feels more positive than negative if you take the whole tour. Yes, yeah, uh, for, for a start off. Um, it, it was so exciting, great to watch in a funny old winter. You know what I mean? Some great games of cricket, some great individual performances. And I think England will be looking back and thinking to themselves, oh, they'll be kicking themselves, I reckon. They'll be kicking themselves. They, they could have come away with all three of them series. Is OK, perhaps the test Not match the is test a little series. bit tricky. Well, OK, I'm seeing it. You know, they won that first one, had opportunities, you know, just in the other test match series to perhaps force wins and perhaps nick that test series so I'm thinking that they'll be sort of sitting there thinking I don't think they'll be beating themselves up too much about losing every one of their series I think they'll be almost as you said in a funny sort of way patting themselves on the back and just saying listen unlucky lads you know next time we do it we'd have learned by it and hopefully we can just cross over the line yeah I mean June the second when that test match against New Zealand starts at look it's almost like a different game yeah, yeah. Mm, the, the cricket that yeah. was played in India on those wickets and um, yeah, we've criticised the pitches they were poor you know, but the kind of cricket that you, you play on, on those kind of wickets is completely different to what England are going to face for the two against New Zealand, five against India, and obviously uh, five in Australia. They're certainly not going to be facing spinners in Australia where yeah. the ball would land on a length and, and, and spit over your right oh, shoulder yeah. Yeah, from a left arm spinner. So um, yeah. disappointing in terms of the management of not allowing the best team to be playing in those four tests. But yeah. come June, if England beat New Zealand, which I, I guess there will be because there'll be a lot of New Zealand players missing, there may be a few. England players missing, but with the Duke ball, um, you know, England will win a few test matches in the summer. I, I would say almost that the Indian test series will be pretty much forgotten. And maybe yeah. the biggest the biggest uncertainty, just finally, is still around the spin bowling situation, isn't it? That doesn't feel as though it's been resolved at all over the winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, say a, little Leach, bit, a little bit that Jack yeah, Leach okay, has become yeah, number yeah. one, perhaps. But yeah, there's, as, as you said, Mike was saying, if you're a cricketer nowadays, get yourself playing one day cricket. Well, if you're a spin bowler, get yourself some wickets. Get yourself some wickets because mm-hmm. you can have a chance of playing for your country. Yeah, Michael? Yeah, I tell you. I mean, Jack Leach, you know, stand out. Uh, he's, he's England's number one now, so... It's almost settled that, that that argument. You know, Jack Leach will be the test match spinner. Uh, he'll try and play every test match this summer and get a few wickets. But uh, the, younger, the younger protagonists need a bit of help, don't they? Yeah, After they do. After the winter. 
Yeah, uh, um, yeah, particularly someone like Dominic Best. You know, he's back at Yorkshire. Yeah. He's going to play lots of four-day cricket. He just needs a little bit of uh, confidence. Boos get a few wickets. You know, I think it's important for him that he plays a full year of county cricket, play yeah. every single game, try and get 50, 60 wickets. Is it a good county, though, Mike? Now, Very yeah. good county, Phil. Very good <laughs> county. <laughs> well, we have ended on a low note, haven't we? But there hey, we steady are. On. <laughs> Suffers and Vaughan's Cricket Show on Five Live.